Hi, it's Mrs. B from the New City Library. Today I have a book called The Fantastic Undersea Life of Jacques Cousteau by Dan Yaccarino, and I'm reading with permission of Random House. Jacques Cousteau loved the sea. He spent his whole life exploring it. The ocean was the most incredible place he'd ever seen, and he wanted to share its beauty with the world. Growing up in France, little Jacques was a weak and sickly boy. Doctors encouraged him to swim to build up his strength. He discovered that he loved the water. Jacques also loved to tinker and build all sorts of gadgets. He saved his money and bought a camera to make his own movies, then took it apart to see how it worked. When he was a young man, Jacques was badly hurt in a car accident. Doctors told him he would have to wear arm braces for the rest of his life, but he refused to accept this. Just as he had done before, he turned to the sea for strength and swam every day in the Mediterranean. A friend gave him a pair of goggles so that he could see underwater. Those goggles changed his life forever. Cousteau wanted to stay underwater longer to see even more. The diving suits of his day were heavy and bulky. They didn't allow much freedom of movement, and an air hose tethered the diver to a boat. So Jacques set about tinkering, fashioning snorkels from things like inner tubes and garden hoses, but they weren't good enough. Cousteau and his engineer friend, Emile Gagnon, created a breathing apparatus they called the aqua lung. It was the first machine that would let a diver breathe underwater for long periods of time. Now Cousteau was free to truly explore. A silent world opened up to him. Cousteau wanted to share the amazing beauty of the sea with the world, so he created an airtight cover for his camera. He made lights to illuminate the sea's mysteries and found a way to film underwater. Cousteau bought a boat and turned it into his very own floating research lab and film studio. He sailed his beloved Calypso all over the world. Cousteau discovered many treasures in the Mediterranean Sea, and it was there that he shot The Silent World, the first full-length, full-color, underwater film ever made. It took the world by storm. Cousteau's film gave people their first glimpse of the amazing universe under the waves. Everyone loved what they saw as much as Jacques did, and they wanted to see more. So Cousteau set about showing them. He and his team created even better diving equipment and cameras. Cousteau's team invented the diving saucer, which could hold two people and descend 350 meters into the ocean. Next came the sea flea, which held one person and could go down 500 meters. Cousteau was on a never-ending quest to go deeper and learn more. Cousteau explored the frigid waters of Antarctica and found them teeming with penguins, humpback whales, and squid. Cousteau wanted to see if people could actually live underwater. He and his team built a series of underwater labs where people lived and worked for days and weeks at a time. But they found that people need sunlight to live, and so Cousteau's 
dream of colonizing the ocean was not to be. Jacques Cousteau was the world's ambassador of the oceans. He produced 50 books, two encyclopedias, and dozens of documentary films. His popular TV series, The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau, brought whales, octopuses, otters, and dolphins right into people's living rooms. While exploring off the coast of Australia, Cousteau and his crew saw coral reefs, kelp forests, and sponge gardens. They came face to face with the leafy sea dragon. When diving in the waters near France, Cousteau and his crew found a sunken ship full of wine jars over 2,200 years old. They tasted the wine. Alas, it was bitter. The fish off the coast of Africa were friendly and curious and did not swim away. Cousteau was the first human being they had ever seen. A big grouper adopted the crew while they were filming and mischievously knocked over lights and cameras. Cousteau and his team explored the world. But when they went back to the Mediterranean, Cousteau found it had changed. The seas were polluted, plants and animals were dying, and so the ocean's ambassador became their most important defender. He started the Cousteau Society, which is committed to educating people about ocean life and protecting our seas from pollution. So that was some cool information about Jacques Cousteau, someone I admire very much. See you next time.